Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. You know how the Bible talks about we should have no other gods. We should worship no other god. We should not bow down to any other image. Why is it that we place so many people and so many things before God? Why is that? I always look at how sometimes women or men, when they get into a relationship, all of a sudden the things of God come secondary. All of a sudden, uh, we've got a lot of plans and we've got things to do, places to go, people to see. But that always seems to take the place of spending time with the Lord. That seems to take the place of the priorities. We end up compromising, bowing, yielding in the wrong direction, slipping out of our lane and getting into someone else's lane with them. Hmm. I wonder why. What is it so desperate in us that makes us feel like we have to? What is it so desperate in us that makes us reach for the wrong thing. It's like a child being in the kitchen knowing their mother told them to stay out, right? So the mother keeps the child out of the kitchen for their own protection, but the child sneaks in, plays around the stove, and then gets their hand burnt because they went out of their safety zone in an act of disobedience. What is it? A man can talk you into bed. A woman can 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 seduce you in under the sheets quicker than God can convince you to obey him. What is that? What's that about? It, it's so weird to me how quickly we yield. But okay, let me not fuss. What I want to bring to our attention is we have to choose who our God really is. We have to decide which side of the fence are we going to stay on. Because straddling the fence, baby, it will get you nowhere. You got to walk on one side of the fence or walk on the other side of the fence. But straddling the fence, your feet won't even touch the ground. So you get nowhere fast. And we don't think about how, what a stumbling block these moments of yielding and compromise are. We don't think about how, how we put other people first. You know, there are times when, because we haven't given God our hot pursuit, we think that people make us happier than God ever could. Flip that upside down, baby. I've been on both sides of that fence. And I am living proof that no human being, as good as my husband was, not even him, no human being can make you happier than God can. None. No relationship can fulfill you more than God. He can give you a gratification just based on you obeying him because that's some of his reward system. And we don't realize how much we miss out on every time we compromise, every time we yield, every time we slip into someone else's lane or bed or activity that lends and trends away from the ways of God. What is it about that? You ever ask yourself why? But the thing is, you will go through river and dale. You will go through dangers, toils, and snares to get to your lover, your other lover, your sweetheart, your better half, whatever you want to call them. But you are oh, so tired. You just don't have the ability to concentrate on trying to pray to God. You just don't feel like reading that Bible is just work and you're just going to fall asleep anyway. 
you might as well watch your favorite program. You realize how we even put the television, movies, the phone. Oh, we're not even going to talk about the cell phone. Some of you can't even have a meal with anybody without pulling that little ugly box out, can you? Mm -hmm. Well, see, that's the way we are with God. God is waiting. He says, I miss my time with you those moments together. I want to be with you each day, but it hurts me when you say, you're too busy, too busy trying to serve me. Well, how can you serve me if your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart, wanting more than just a part of you. Oh, it's true. I miss my time with you.